I've been interested in metal and stones and claws and teeth and feathers and all that kind of stuff for years just because of the tribal aspect but now I'm getting more and more into the industrial because it seems to have and give form for base pieces and I guess you'd say the um, the leather, the, the, the bead work and stuff like that, that's more or less the accoutrement to the full meal deal. When you start a piece it's the beginning of a puzzle, a three-dimensional puzzle that you're really not sure what it's supposed to look like when it's done. Uh, when I'm working on pieces, the thing that scares me the most is uh, making the little mistakes that is inevitable with this type of work. But it's a growing and it's a learning process when you do make mistakes because you don't try to cover it up per se. You actually launch yourself into another direction to finish the puzzle and to get the piece together as it's supposed to turn out by itself. A lot of the pieces that I use or the parts that I use in putting these puzzles together, you obviously just can't go to the local Circle K and buy them or, or find them someplace on sale downtown at, at one of the strip malls. Um, this stuff has been hard won, hard fought finding. Uh, you get out in the desert, you find this stuff. Um, it's, it's skeletons of industry that are just left out there after the carcasses have been stripped down from them. And it's stuff that shouldn't be in the desert itself. Uh, it should not be there, it should never have been there, but I'm lucky enough that people did throw the stuff away, so now I've got stuff that I can't get in the store that is pretty much one-of-a-kind snowflake stuff, and then you just go ahead and put them all together and make a big snowflake out of a lot of little ones. As a kid, I grew up with a lot of influences with the, the Indians of uh, Eastern Washington, the Coville and Pierce above Grand Coulee Dam. Uh, the, the stuff that they did up there with the leather, uh, with beadwork, um, with like walking sticks, lances, uh, saddle work, uh, footwear, it, it, it was stuff I'd never seen before in my whole life. And I was a young kid and I was very impressionable. TV had just been brought out to where you could sit around, you know, the, the opiate of the masses, the, the one-eyed monster and um, it didn't seem to do that much for me. I, I seemed to realize that what people were doing with their hands, what they were doing with nature, they were spitting out impeccable pieces of artwork. When it comes to my favorite pieces of artwork, I'd have to say number one, the bone room itself, because this thing has just been accumulating pieces and parts over the years since the thing was created and uh, it basically is a piece of art you can walk into and look at you know it's like about as in-depth as you can get with art for the for the genre that I'm doing um, and in the process of, of being in here it inspires me to make the splinter pieces that are in the museum or in the galleries or or the stuff that I do uh, it's all for for, for pleasure um, and it's just a lot of fun you know, and like I say, the bone room is pretty much the inspiration, and that's probably the, my most favorite piece of artwork. And if you if you look around in here, you'll see um, a lot of uh, facets of what I am and who I am and what I think about, and that's just you're inside my brain. Another thing that's kind of great is the fact that right outside the, the door here of the bone room, I've got two areas that are designated to nothing but materials I've picked up uh, to the point of probably several tons of rust out there, uh, or ferrous oxide, whatever you want to call it. But uh, it's, it's, it's all materials for down the road for new and future pieces. And um, I wish we'd get a little bit more rain because I need a little bit more coloration on a couple pieces.
one of the last things I can say is I'm, I'm very grateful about the fact that I've seen a lot of the planet, I've seen a lot of different cultures. Um, I've been able to infuse and imbibe that in some of the work that I do. Um, not only that, but the way modern society is going, I like the fact that they're a throwaway society because without them, I wouldn't be doing the pieces I'm doing right now. They'd be totally different, but they'd probably still be in the same line, but just different materials. So to all those folks out there that keep like the dirty stuff up, you know, you shouldn't be doing it, but I thank you for it.